Hi, welcome back to the channel. So I get asked a lot, what's one of the best entry devices in the realm of IoT, cybersecurity, and ethical hacking tools? My number one choice is always the Card Pewter, specifically the Card Pewter ADV. Now, the Card Pewter has built a very nice community behind it, and M5 Stack makes quality devices that we've gone over a lot of different times in our YouTube shorts. The ADV is a very welcome upgrade from the Card Pewter 1 and the Card Pewter 1.1, and the GPIO pins have spawned different boards like this lower cap, which we'll get into in a second. I love the Card Pewter, and for 30 US dollars, you can get into IoT education, learn about Wi Fi security, Bluetooth vulnerabilities, and a lot more. M5 Stack launched the Card Pewter to become the perfect educational IoT device, and I personally think that it's lived up to that standard. More and more people of different backgrounds and different ages are becoming more interested in maker projects, IoT devices, and STEM education in general. And I think that's amazing. Now the Card Pewter ADV comes with a lot of neat features. You get a full QWERTY keyboard as well as arrow keys to help you move and navigate between different UIs. It's got a built-in microphone, a stunning display that's actually better than you might think. It's powered by the ESP32 Stamp S3A by M5 Stack, which is a welcome upgrade from the Stamp S3. It has a much better antenna and it's a lot more receptive. It's got a built-in infrared transmitter right about there a reset button, SD card slot, GPIO pins that are a very welcome upgrade from the original card pewter. You've got this select button right here that actually helps a lot and you could think of it as an emergency OK button. We have the on and off switch which you want to pay attention to because you cannot charge this device without switching it on. That might be a bad feature but it makes sense. Now. Over here, we've got a USB-C port as well as a full-size headphone jack and a built-in speaker. It's also got a gyroscope, so if you need a gyroscope, it's definitely there. Now, when you get your card pewter, any card pewter, you want to download the M5 Burner app and flash your card pewter with the launcher firmware. The launcher firmware will allow you to download different custom firmware over the air, save it to your SD card, boot from your SD card, or install just straight from your card pewter, which is a really nice feature. Now when you're in the launcher firmware, anything that's highlighted means that it's compatible with both the card pewter and the card pewter ADV. Anything in white means that it won't work on your ADV properly. But there's a lot of neat custom firmware that you can download straight onto your ADV, such as Just Call Me Coco's Marauder firmware that we will be downloading right over the air. Now one of the most popular firmware for the card pewter ADV is the Bruce firmware, and you can actually use the Bruce firmware with the LoRa cap. All we gotta do is head over to GPS, and then go to war driving, and that's it. It'll actually start war driving while you're driving. Now I tested the card pewter ADV running the Bruce firmware and using the GPS and the LoRa cap for a a while and it had a few issues. For some reason it would cut off sometimes, like within 30 minutes of it war driving it would just stop war driving. It would definitely connect but it would stop war driving, which I found kind of strange. I tried doing a little bit of debugging and I couldn't figure it out. I think it's still in its beginning phases as having GPIO pins on the ADV is still a relatively new thing. So I wouldn't be completely discouraged but Let's move on to Meshtastic. Now from the launcher app, you can actually switch between Bruce and Meshtastic anytime you want. It'll save where you left off, which is a nice feature. One thing I do gotta note is upon boot, as soon as you boot into Meshtastic, no matter where I was, the GPS connected to satellites immediately. But the UI has some bugs. There's some things that I personally find annoying. You can fix them with a little bit of know-how, but they're still annoying. For example, the arrow keys do not work. If I use the arrow key to the right, it's a backslash. Why is it a backslash? But watch this. If I type in the back, if I type back, right here, it'll actually switch between modes. And if I want to select, I have to select from the top, which is kind of annoying. Now M5 Stack makes quality devices and I enjoyed testing the LoRa cap, but the stock 868 antenna is the wrong frequency and it didn't outperform a proper 915 antenna, although it did its job pretty well. I was actually surprised. The GPS connects instantly and with continuous use of both, you're lucky to get 18 to 24 hours of continuous use, which is a little bit underwhelming, at least for me, because I'm used to radios lasting three days to a week. But 
there was a part in my testing that made this a lot more fun. Now with the ADV's Welcome GPIO pins, we now have different boards for the card pewter, such as this Pinqua NRF24 CC1101 cap, which allows you to analyze, copy, and relay sub gigahertz signals and analyze the 2.4 gigahertz band, which can come in handy when you're using the Bruce firmware. Now the Pinqua cap is not plug and play. As a matter of fact, it's a step-by-step -step process. It's not hard, but it takes a few steps. And I'll link a step-by-step -step process to it down below that I have in one of my YouTube shorts. But remember, when you're using a CC1101 and an RF24 with some of the features in Bruce to abide by the laws of your region and area and don't get yourself in trouble, remember to only test your own hardware and don't be a skid. Now I 3D printed this really nice stand for the card computer and it really helps if you're having it sit on a desk. But we're going to head over to NRF24 after editing the config file and switching to 2.4 gigahertz. Head over to here and then go to Spectrum. And this is arguably one of the best NRF24s that I've ever used on the Bruce firmware. It comes out really nice, but there's also another neat feature in the Bruce firmware that we kind of need to mention. Now allow me to introduce you to the newest feature in the Bruce firmware, which is the LoRa chat option. You can now change your username, chat in a group LoRa mesh chat, and you can change your frequency, which is a very welcome addition to the Bruce firmware. Now I've been using the card pewter for quite some time, and I remember when the only firmware that was actually available was the Nemo firmware. I remember when they launched the Game Boy firmware, which is a really nice firmware to have on your card pewter. But with the upgrade and upgrade and upgrade of the Bruce firmware, which I've been following for quite some time, and I'm a huge fan of that project, and I'm a huge fan of what they've been doing with it, the LoRa chat option is a very welcome addition, and it's making Bruce much more versatile than it was even three months ago. There's something that we do need to mention. If you try to, for example, download Doom straight from the launcher app, it'll actually get it stuck in a boot loop. Let me show you. So yeah, if you encounter something like that, just use the M5 Burner app. Some applications work, some still have bugs, but there's a ton of developers that are working on their projects every single day and updating them quite frequently. So it's the perfect starter educational device and not just for ethical hacking tools, but for the world of IoT in general. We hope you enjoyed this video, and if you were interested in learning more about different IoT devices, SPCs, microcontrollers, and different variations of tech daily, we go over different variations of tech daily in our shorts. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and like and comment on this video because it helps the algorithm and I'd appreciate it. Also, if you were interested in snagging yourself an ADV, do so on M5 Stack's official website or from their official AliExpress page. Don't buy a scalped ADV. Yes, they are sold out a lot, but they restock a whole lot more often than you'd think. And if you wanna know when M5 Stack restocks on their devices, check out their social media platforms. And I'd like to thank you, Jimmy, for making devices like this as awesome as they are.